All right, so first things first, I just want to say right away, I was wrong about Justin Gaethje, man. I'm not going to sit here and try to act like none too crazy. I was wrong about Justin Gaethje. He got the victory. He showed up. He did well. I was going to make a separate video about Justin Gaethje, but I feel like he pretty much just proved himself. He hung around, uh, put on more damage on Fazeev. Um, he even got a takedown. Um, the striking numbers, I don't know if it was really that big of a difference. It, it, Justin Gaethje edged him out a little bit. And... Um, Fazeev went to the body a lot, but yeah, Fazeev just, he, he needs to work on his cardio for sure. Um, it was apparent, that was a thing that was like definitely going to be a problem. Like, I wasn't thinking about it too much, but if you guys want me to make a separate video about that, I will. But I got to get into the main event, man. Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards. Now, honestly, I literally knew that Leon Edwards was going to win. I even put a bet on him. Um, I wanted to put him, I wanted to make the underdog of the night video because he was plus 205. I put money on him. I'm like, yeah, Leon should definitely win the fight. Um, and the reason why I want to say why Leon Edwards definitely was going to win the fight, guys, you have to really understand when they were talking about the altitude of fighting in Salt Lake City, that was actually real, guys. I don't know why people just like decided to disregard that, but you have to have like, let's use our common sense here for two seconds because I was going to make this underdog video and say this. If Leon Edwards was clearly gassed out like we've never seen him before in altitude and he was still able to find a knockout, what in the hell makes you think that he would not be able to? Go back, defend as many takedowns as Kamar Usman, you know, attempted. He defended more than Kamaru landed in the last fight. And he was able to get a head kick and go five rounds and not take any damage over the course of a 25-minute fight at altitude when he's gassed. So if you bring him to his hometown, you know, no altitude, what do you guys think is going to happen? It's pretty, like, I always say, like, it's hindsight 2020. Um, but that was just my thought process on how I thought the fight was going to play out. Now, as for the fight itself, it was pretty simple. Like, Leon just landed the bigger shots. He landed more leg, more damage in leg kicks, more damage in body kicks. Um, he almost landed that head kick again. He was trying to, like, set it up um, to attack the body, like the legs and the um, and his body. Yeah, well, attack his legs and attack his body to set up the high kick. But obviously, Usman was going to be training to block that. So he did actually block that high kick when it came up there. I think Leon probably threw it three or four times. I don't think he threw it that much. Um... And yeah, he did a really great job of defending the takedowns. Usman went 4 of 15 on takedowns. So obviously, Leon defended 11 takedowns and Usman only got 4. Same thing, just like last fight. He defended more takedowns than Usman landed. Um, I kind of got a little bit scared because obviously, Leon got the point deduction for the fence grab. I thought that that could make the fight get really weird. But what made it even more telling was that the fight was judged 48-46, 48-46, and 47-47. So that was clear as day that um leon edwards clearly won the fight it wasn't like a weird um random mixed up card um yeah it was 48 46 48 46 and 47 47 so leon clearly won the fight uh even if you know if the point was never deducted he would have those judges would have scored it uh 49 46 for him 49 46 and then maybe that last judge would have left it up you know it would have been 48 47 for leon obviously so he won a clear unanimous decision um had it not been for the point deduction um and yeah the fight was entertaining um, like once again, respect to Usman. Like you can't, like you can never take away nothing from Kamaru Usman. Um, I've had my moments of not liking him because like how he always taking breaks in the fight, and he did it a lot in this fight too. And to be fair, there was the fence grab was a blatant foul by Leon, but some of the like the lower blows, I don't think like I don't know. I, I I've had my moments of not liking Usman during the fights, but um, ever since I've been watching him, um, when he fought Tyron Woodley, uh, no, I actually watched him fight. I forgot what was the name of the guy that he fought when he was at Mr. 30%. And I remember watching him fight RDA and literally falling asleep. And then I just remember him like having that dominant performance versus um, Tyron Woodley. And then just going on his run of like fighting Jorge, fighting Colby, fighting Gilbert. So nothing but respect to the Nigerian Nightmare Usman. Um, I low-key thought he was going to retire because I like, honestly, I don't think there's nothing left for him to prove. But if he still wanted to fight, then hey, you know what I'm saying? Who, you know, more respect to Usman. As for Leon, um... Yeah, like, I, I, I suspected this from Leon because of the fact of, you know, like I said earlier in the video, him fighting at altitude and still being able to find a knockout is pure insanity. So you can't, you know, you, you, you just can't take that away from him. He clearly has the heart of a champion. And he's on a 12 fight on beating streak. 11, um, 11, um, 0 and 1 because he had that, you know, that no contest versus um, Bilal Muhammad. But in terms of what's next for the welterweight division, though, guys, it, like, welterweight is busted. Your welterweight is literally so many options they can do for a title shot. And I, I just want to go through the, uh, you know, the people that's at welterweight really, really quickly, and then you know we'll end the video off. But 
obviously, number one just lost Usman. He lost twice, so clearly he's not going to get a title shot no time soon. Uh, Kobe Covington's right there. They had him in the, you know, in the, uh, in the O2. He weighed in as a backup fighter, so Kobe might probably be getting the next title shot. Then you got uh, Hamza, who's moving up to 85, so he's no longer in the picture. You got Bilal Muhammad, who's been in a long win streak, but nobody really wants to see that fight, for being honest. And I think Bilal Muhammad needs to just win one more fight. They might even do Kamaru Usman versus Bilal Muhammad. If I'm being 100% honest, I think that might be the next fight they do. Um, if I'm Bilal Muhammad, that's the fight I'm calling for, at least. Uh, then you got Gilbert Burns at number five, going up, you know, getting ready to fight Jorge. Obviously, if Gilbert wins, he definitely should be in the title mix, obviously. And then um, if Jorge wins, he's definitely getting a title shot because of the three-piece in the soda. So, obviously, everybody wants to see that. I wanted to see that fight. They were supposed to fight on that card where Dustin Poirier fought Oliveira, I think. But, they, you know, the fight got canceled. Um, then at number six, you got Shavkat, who's Shavkat's coming, man. I don't know who's going to fight Shavkat next. Um, he does need to work on keeping his chin tucked or whatever. I thought he got hit a lot in his last fight versus Jeff Neal. But Shavkat is coming, man. So, I don't know what's up with that. Wonder Boy is always looming around, and then from there, it just, it's just you know, it gets lower and lower and lower. So, you know, we stop at Wonder Boy, who's ranked number seven, and obviously, we had to talk about Jorge ranked number 11 because he's fighting against number five Gilbert Burns. So, welterweight is gonna be crazy. Neon Edwards has enough, a lot of options. Obviously, he's gonna head over to Miami, like he said, and get ready to watch Gilbert Burns versus Jorge, and he's gonna cross his fingers that Jorge wins the fight because that's a big payday and that's gonna be a great opportunity. To, you know, they're gonna be able to put on a great fight, striker versus striker. And Leon has the ability to wrestle, so that fight's gonna be crazy. I actually hope to see it. I'm not gonna lie. I would love to see Kobe fight for the belt too, either or Kobe or um, Jorge. I would love to see, and then everybody else outside of that, of uh, Gilbert Burns. I love Gilbert Burns. I love you know how he's constantly taking fights. But that's gonna do it for the video, y'all. Um, like I said once again, I was wrong about Justin Gaethje because I know some people are probably gonna come at me for that. You know, like I said before, you can't get them all right. I was wrong. You know, it is what it is. But yeah, shout out to Leon. Shout out to Usman. Um, he's still one of the greatest welterweights of all time, but now Leon Edwards is cementing his legacy. And that's a great thing about UFC, about MMA, man. The sport is always evolving, so we're always getting to see that next greatest of all time. It's, that, that's just the way how the sport um, moves. It goes fast, like next man up. So if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell. And guys, just let me know what you guys thought about the card overall. I think that Casey O'Neill is a bum. I just had to throw that out there. And um, I love you, Joanne Wood. And, uh, yeah. Yo, I'll catch y'all boys in the next video, man. Peace. Oh, yeah, by the way, Dustin Poirier will be fighting for the uh, title next, so don't even question it. Stop playing.